How to be orange, chapter 13. Dutch meetings are from Mars. The quote, For most cultures, a decision is the end of the discussion. For the Dutch, it's the beginning. Faye Becker, Ninsei Institute. Dutch office culture is, to me, based on paradox. How can a meeting start out so much like an American meeting, but then end so differently? Dutch meetings and American meetings both start by getting to the point. Other meetings start quite differently. I've had the pleasure of attending meetings in a few different cultures. As an amateur cultural anthropologist, I've noticed that business meetings are a bit like foreplay. In that sense, Dutch meetings are from Mars and Belgian meetings are from Venus. In Belgium, even Flanders, I've found that the culture is more inspired by the French. Belgian meetings are more like foreplay for women. Yes, your meeting starts with coffee, but it's nice coffee, espresso coffee. You drink your coffee at a cafe table where you can watch your coffee being made just for you. A conference room for business? No, no one's thinking about that right now. Tell me, what would you like with your coffee? Perhaps a cookie. And not just a cookie, but a nice cookie. Nothing you have to unwrap. No, no, these are made fresh just for you. And you look like you might enjoy some of our fine chocolates as well. Perhaps there's a menu for the fine selection of chocolate to go with your fine coffee just for you. Take your time. What's the rush? How was your journey? How are you feeling? What's on your mind? Business, you say? Well, oui, oui. Let us go to the conference room. Dutch meetings are like foreplay for men. Here's some coffee. Let's get to business. Business, business. Cheese sandwich, business. Ah, that was good business. Want a cigarette? The smoking area is outside. Doei. To me, coming from New York, the Dutch way feels more familiar. Yes, Americans will ask how are you, but we don't really care. For fun, you can honestly tell Americans how you're feeling and watch as Americans react dumbfounded. Like the Dutch, the Americans tend to get to business. Unlike the Dutch, the Americans expect an agreement to end the meeting. Dutch meetings seem to exist as an excuse to have more meetings. American meetings will sometimes end with, yeah, all right, let's agree to disagree. Dutch meetings are more like, let's disagree to agree. This brings me back to the seminar, Dutch Identity, Who Are We? There was a speaker who had done a survey of Dutch managers. He asked the Dutch managers, what's the most important factor for your job satisfaction? He'd offered choices such as salary, recognition, opportunity for promotion, daily commute, travel, perks, lease car. But according to the survey, most Dutch didn't pick any of those. The most important factor by far for Dutch managers was autonomy, self-determination, freedom. Apparently, this trend goes all the way back to the revolt against the Spanish occupation. The Dutch don't like people telling them what to do. There are definitely benefits to the Dutch management style. While many cultures have top-down management, the Dutch are more innovative. I was working on a project doing explanimation for a Dutch innovation, water-cooled ultra-low temperature freezers. Standard freezer design involves removing heat from the freezer and blowing it into the air. A Dutch engineering team looked at the design and thought, why not instead remove the heat with water? The freezer effectively becomes a water heater. The design would not just cut down on costs, but help the environment. The result? No go. Why? These Dutch engineers were working for a Japanese company, and according to the Dutch team, their Japanese bosses clearly valued research and development, but only when the top management asked for it. Eventually, they took their idea to a competitor. So don't be surprised if you see it at Philips. The downside of the non-hierarchical Dutch management style is that hard decisions can be hard to come by. Put another way, the Dutch change their minds so often, it's a miracle anything gets done. Once, I was hired to perform some tailored stand-up at a corporate event for a product launch. At least that's what I thought, because that's what they told me. But I should have known better. To prepare for the production launch, I was invited to a meeting. 
the woman who'd hired me introduced me to her colleagues, and as she reviewed what I was supposed to do, they all took turns second-guessing the plan, until it was time to go, and we weren't sure of anything anymore. That's when I got to witness a Dutch tradition. I know what we said at the meeting, but at the meeting to review the meeting, we decided that we should do it completely differently. So we should have a new meeting and then another meeting to review the meeting about this meeting. Why so many meetings? It was explained to me. Iedereen moet zijn plasje overdoen. Literally, everyone gets a chance to piss on your idea. There's such an emphasis on consensus. Everyone should agree on everything. Yet, far from being agreeable, many Dutch meetings I've attended feature the most negative, contrary, cynical conversations I've ever been part of. I've been to Dutch meetings where everyone agrees on a proposal so quickly that you can tell it's just uncomfortable. You can tell the Dutch managers are feeling, uh, this can't be right. And then someone says, yeah, Mar, but what if it's like every Dutch manager grows up with an inner insurance salesman, a little built-in actuary to calculate every possible risk? Yes, but what if the comedian is not funny? Yes, but... Uh, what if the people in our audience have no sense of humor? Uh, yes, but what if there's someone in the audience who's having an affair with someone else in the audience and he makes a joke about inter-office affairs and they are offended? This is an actual quote. Back to the product launch. The woman who'd hired me called me back and invited me to a follow-up meeting. Only this time, instead of being hired, I was back to maybe hired. I made myself available for a conference call. That turned out to be a bad call. Literally, it was a bad connection with distortion anytime two people spoke at once. Especially disturbing was the fact that they were a telecommunications company. I once heard a saying, a camel is a horse designed by a committee. That's what they were attempting in this conference call. They'd sent me a briefing with different people's input in different colors. One wanted tailored stand-up. Another wanted live role play. One wanted no more than 30 minutes. Another wanted no less than 45. In the conference call, I said, I've read your briefing and I'm still unclear what you all want. Why don't we start from the beginning? Bad move. There was no one person taking charge of the conversation and again, I heard conflicting requests. They said they'd call back. Afterward, I simply got an email saying I'd lost the job. Maybe hired had now gone to not hired. And it was an angry email blaming me for a lack of professionalism. The email was in fact a series of emails from everyone on the conference call. Babette, in the conference call, Mr. Shapiro asked us to start from the beginning. I couldn't hear everything he said. But did he even read the briefing? Ingrid, I couldn't hear everything that was said, but Babette said that Mr. Shapiro said that he didn't read the briefing. Monique, I couldn't hear everything either, but Ingrid said that Babette said that Greg said that he didn't even bother to read the briefing. We have chosen not to work with Mr. Shapiro for obvious reasons. What's funny to me is that most of these women probably had a degree in communication. I don't know if Chinese whispers was part of the curriculum, but it seems they learned that lesson very well. They'd also learned a valuable lesson from sending that email. Don't forward me in their email addresses, because as an American, I'm not afraid to send a reply all telling them that they're idiots. I found out later that the client really wanted neither stand-up nor role-play, but a video. At times like these, I guess I'm just glad I could help them figure out what they didn't want.